Hi folks, HR Funk here with a classic pistol review on a design that was the premier product of what has since become one of the largest firearms manufacturers in the world. What I have here is the classic Ruger Standard 22 pistol. This was the first firearm ever designed by Bill Ruger and he designed it back in 1949 and it has been in more or less standard production ever since. Now as I said this is one of the original versions and since this design came out, it has evolved into the Mark I, Mark II, etc, etc. And this is one of the originals. We're going to take a close-up look at this pistol. And before the video is done, we'll go out to the range and do some shooting with it and see how it performs. And this pistol at the outset was intended to basically be a fun 22 semi-automatic pistol. And as you'll see when we look at it up close, it doesn't have a lot of the frills that we typically associate, especially with the newer Ruger 22 pistols or even some other target pistols that were contemporary with the time that it was designed. Even so, it has become extremely popular. It was popular almost from the day it was launched. And part of that has to do with the fact that in designing this pistol and coming up with ways to manufacture it, Bill Ruger came up with some ways to help cut the cost of the pistol and help keep the cost of the pistol fairly low. In fact, it had an introductory price of $37.50 back in about 1950. And between that and a very favorable review of this pistol that appeared in the American Rifleman magazine back in those days, as I said, it went on to become extremely popular and in a modified form is still with us to this day. The pistol that I'm using for today's review was manufactured in the early 1970s, so roughly 20 years after the design was initially produced. And as such, it retains most of the original touches from the pistol when it was first designed by Bill Ruger. It does not have the Red Eagle, which of course was changed when Alex Sturm died, but otherwise it basically is in the same format. And I think the Ruger Standard 22 is one of the most easily recognizable handguns between its cylindrical bolt and receiver, its tapered barrel, its classic backswept design, and its trigger guard. It's just one of those pistols that as soon as you see it, you know exactly what it is. And interestingly, a lot of folks believe that the grip design was modeled after the German Luger, and I thought that for a long time also. But apparently Bill Ruger actually designed this part of the pistol to be reminiscent of the Japanese Nambu. And you do see that styling in both the grip and the trigger guard of this firearm. Now as I said at the outset, this pistol was envisioned from the beginning as an informal target shooting, plinking, and general fun pistol. But we don't see adjustable sights, which we typically would see with a similar pistol these days. The rear sight can be drift adjusted in its dovetail for windage adjustment, but essentially it's just a plain notch with a partridge style front sight. This one has a little bit of white paint added to make it more visible. And of course we can see that it's undercut to help with glare, but otherwise the sights are pretty rudimentary by today's standards. Even so, as we'll see when we get out to the range, the pistol is capable of very good accuracy. This one also has the classic tapered barrel. This one is a four and three quarter inch barrel. And it has the classic heel style magazine release, as opposed to the more common one that we see nowadays being the button right at the rear of the trigger guard. But for this style of pistol, which is not going to be used for defensive use, at least not very often, that heel style magazine release is perfectly functional and it holds the magazine very securely. The magazines used by the Ruger Standard 22 will hold nine rounds of 22 long rifle ammunition and they do have an extension on the side of the follower so that you can pull it down as you are dropping ammunition into the magazine. The pistol does not have a last round hold open. That's something that came in later versions of the pistol, but the originals did not have that. Although you can lock the bolt to the rear with the safety, as I did just there, when you retract the bolt and lock the safety in the engaged position, 
it will hold the slide to the rear. Another thing to be aware of is the safety cannot be applied if the action is not cocked. So if I were to fire the pistol, I would not be able to apply the safety. The safety, as you can see, moves in the exact same direction as the safety on a 1911, meaning up is safe and down is fire. The Ruger Standard 22 pistol operates on a standard blowback type action, meaning when the pistol is fired, the only thing that keeps the slide from moving backwards as the bullet is moving down the barrel is the mass of the slide and the tension of the recoil spring. Even so, once the bullet exits, the pressure being exerted against the slide overcomes that mass and tension of the spring and causes the bolt to retract, extract and eject the fired casing, and then load a fresh cartridge into the chamber. Since this is not my pistol, I'm not going to dry fire it in order to check the trigger pull weight, but I can tell you that the trigger pull is roughly four and a half pounds. It's a single action trigger and it has a very nice break. The trigger quality on this pistol is very, very good. And aiding in the quality of that trigger pull is the fact that the trigger itself is a wide target style trigger. And as you can see, it is a groove trigger. So again, it feels very good, and the trigger pull quality, as I mentioned a moment ago, is very good. This pistol has hard plastic grips that are pretty finely checkered, and that checkering is very functional. It feels like you can get a good grip on the pistol. Not that the 22 rimfire generates enough recoil impulse to make it difficult to hold on to, but even so, I can feel that that checkering does engage the palm of my hand and allows me to hold the pistol very securely. Another thing to note about this pistol, and this was true of a lot of firearms from this era, is the very nice bluing that we see here. It's not a matte blue, which is typically what we see nowadays. Instead, we see a very nice satin bluing on this standard 22 pistol that I think looks very nice. Probably the biggest downside to these pistols and the biggest complaint from people who own them have to do with disassembling the pistol for cleaning. It is kind of a chore to disassemble this pistol. And in fact, it's enough of a chore that I'm not going to demonstrate it in this video. You do have to pull down on this latch and then pull the pin down from the receiver through the bottom of the frame and that will separate the receiver from the frame. But again, it's a little bit of a chore. It's probably even more of a chore to get it back together. So I'm not going to demonstrate that. But if you have one of these pistols, it is possible. And back when I owned one that was somewhat similar to this, I got to the point that I could disassemble it and reassemble it without all that much difficulty. But it's just one of those things that the more you practice it, the better you get at it. And I am out of practice at this point. And that's pretty well going to wrap things up for our up close look at the classic Ruger Standard 22 pistol. Now let's head off to the range and have some fun. And obviously I've arrived out on the range with the Ruger 22 pistol. In just a couple of minutes, I'm going to start to do some shooting with the pistol and have some fun. And that's really what I'm going to emphasize with this pistol is fun because that's what it's intended for. So I'm not going to shoot it through any of my defensive oriented drills or anything like that. Instead, I'm going to do a little bit of informal accuracy shooting with it with a couple of different types of ammunition. Also, I hear there might be a water bottle Desperado or two around here that are just the right size for a 22 rim fire. And there might even be a rogue tack that needs driving before I'm all done out here. So I'm going to get loaded up and we're going to start to shoot this pistol and see how it performs. And I'm set up and ready to go. In just a couple of minutes, I'm going to start to shoot some informal accuracy drills with the 22 Ruger pistol with some of the different ammunition that I brought out here with me today. And we're just going to take a look at how the pistol groups. Now, I've not shot this pistol before, so I don't know exactly where the sights are set. So particularly at the very beginning, you might see some deviation in the location. But I'll try to correct that as I shoot, and we'll just see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this pistol.
Ah, had a malfunction. There we go. Okay, nice group from that distance of 20 feet. I've got three of those five shots that are almost touching right there. That's probably within about a quarter of an inch or just a little over center to center. One of them made it a little farther away from the group. I am hitting a little bit low, so I'm gonna try five more shots with this Remington Golden Bullet ammo, and I'm gonna move my point of aim. I was using a six o'clock hold that time. I'm gonna move my point of aim to about here. I'm gonna put the tip of the front sight just about at the top of the orange spotter, and we'll see where these five shots go. Yeah, that helped to center things up a bit. Looks like I still might have pulled one low here. I pulled a couple of them low, but uh, it's looking like if from that distance of 20 feet, if I hold the front sight right about here, then I'm hitting generally right below it. So hitting a little bit low with that ammo, but let's try a different type of ammunition now and see how it does. Next up is five rounds of CCI Stinger ammunition. Now I'm guessing because of the difference in velocity between these and the Remingtons that I was just firing, we're going to see them print to a different part of the target, but well, let's find out. And with the stingers, the group opened up just a little bit, still not bad accuracy, but this time they're much closer to my point of aim. I was holding the tip of the front sight at a dead center hold in the target, and I'm hitting maybe just a little low, but not terribly. So again, those stingers with that change in velocity do raise their point of impact somewhat. All right, folks, I'm bored with the bullseye targets already. Let's hammer some splatter targets with the Ruger 22 pistol. <laughs> I was trying to get the rest of the one at the top too, but I ran out of ammunition. Now that's more what this pistol was intended for. I warned you folks, there are some half pint sized desperados that have been lurking around and now they've made their way onto the range. So I'm going to see if I can teach them a lesson with some stingers. By the way, speaking of stingers, my tires back here underneath the desperados are infested with wasps right now. So I hope after I get done here, I make it out without any stingers. And the Desperados have been officially stung by the Stingers, but fortunately, I have not. All right, folks, moment of truth. Is the Ruger 22 pistol a 20-foot tack driver? I've got three rounds loaded in the magazine. I've got a tack in the target, so let's find out. And here we go. I've been hitting just a little bit low and just a touch to the left with the Ruger pistol. So for my first shot at the tack, I'm going to aim just a little bit high and slightly to the right. 
and I'll see if I can drive that thing out of there. Or at least I will as soon as I clear this misfeed. We now return to our regularly scheduled tack driving. Hit low on that first shot. I wasn't expecting that. But I got two shots to go. <laughs> I might not have hit it with that second shot, but I think I scared it to death. Got one more to go. I think those last two shots are about as close as I can come without actually driving the tack. Let's take a closer look and see if I at least touched it. Nope, neither shot touched it. This one, which was number two, was extremely close, but I see just a little bit of white paper there. So no, at least today, in my hands, the Ruger Standard 22 is not going to be a tack driver, but it's awfully darn close. Well, tack driver or not, the Ruger Standard 22 pistol is still a lot of fun, and I've been having a good time out here with it. Now, you might have noticed I had a malfunction or two along the way, which, with a 22 pistol that's intended mainly for plinking and informal target shooting is not exactly tragic. I still am having a lot of fun. I'm going to continue having a lot of fun, but it's time for all of you to go back to the shop, and we'll finish up this video. And that's pretty well going to do it for my classic pistol review of the Ruger Standard 22 pistol. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments about this video, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, if you purchase anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is... And if you use that discount code, it's good for 5% off anything you purchase from Optics Planet. Also remember, I've recently renewed my Twitter account, so you can find me there if you want to communicate back and forth via Twitter at hrfunk underscore channel. I'm also on Parlor, and you can find me there at hrfunk. See you next time, folks, and until then, good shooting. Bye-bye.